Take a look at this section from Citadel of the Infinite Abyss, floor 16. This sign explains it, but what you're supposed to do is go across these platforms until you get to this button up here. And when you press it, it'll deactivate all of them with these on the bottom and activate all of them with them on the top. And it'll also activate this so you actually land on something. Now what I did was I took all the platforms with these on the bottom and then I flipped it over. So it is, in fact, the gameplay is flipping over. But I definitely could have made a, like, flipping the gravity or something kind of section a lot better than I did here. Like, I mean, I did flip all these over, like, that's how I made it, but if they were just random scattered platforms, I doubt anyone would even know the difference. Today I'll be building floors 5 through 6 of Tower of the Grand Finale, my final tower in Obby Creator. Throughout floor 5, the gravity switches several times, which actually ended up taking way more spatial visualization and thinking than I thought it would, hence the 1 million percent brain power in the title. This idea came from several different comments. There might be more than you see here, but these are what I found by searching for comments using some keywords like gravity. Here's the ID if you want to play the tower, and if you go on to enjoy the video, please consider liking and subscribing. So floor 5 is going to be called the gravity box, and floor 6 is going to be called the aqua box. So here's a lovely diagram. So I made this decal that includes everything you see here except this red square and this arrow. Those are like parts like that. So but this gray box is like the spaceship, so it's like this floor here. This lighter gray box is the gravity box, which you can see if you look out these windows. And this one here with the water, that's the aqua box. It's supposed to be like a tank of water, and so the idea is gonna be, you have to flip the gravity, and each time it'll change the gravity a little bit, until you have like an opening, which I didn't actually make on the decal, which is maybe a problem. But let's say it's here. You'd have to flip the gravity enough times to where it eventually makes it so that the water is like, I guess, going this way. If, if the opening were here, and then all the water would drain out. And so there's going to be a door probably over here, and when the water level is below that, it'll open. Then it'll be able to get to the aqua box as the water is draining. And since it takes a certain amount of time to drain, I'll, I'll do the, which I'll make using moving parts. I may make like some timed section or something. We'll see. But for now, let's build some parkour here. So I, I just added that so you can actually jump up to here. I do also think it would make sense if there were like things like this holding this in place in the center of the gravity box. Because if it's just floating there, that doesn't really make any sense. I'll put them in like the center of each side here, if that makes sense. Because these trapdoors here, if I put it on the corners... That wouldn't really work because they're open. If I select these, duplicate them, and then move them down uh, here, and then I'll move them down here, that works. Then I can select eight of them and rotate them like that, and then duplicate them, rotate them like that. Nice. And I'm gonna make these be this diamond plate texture, which is actually the same color as this, but because the texture is different, it appears to be a different color. Hmm. You know what? It's fine. I'll just leave it like that. So I'm gonna like be on top of here, and then. I need to make sure the parkour is, like, built in a way that it works from all the different directions. But I guess I should maybe decide what all those directions are going to be first. So I did just add this to indicate, uh, where the drain is. It's, like, in this top right corner. And I added some signs that explain that. So that means of all the five different locations besides this one, six total, only the last one should have the water, like, up here. So in that case, I think we'll save flipping it 180 degrees upside down. For last. Remember that this is 2D, but the actual thing is 3D. Also remember that this section with the water, you're only gonna see, uh, like, at the end. But we can still imagine it somewhere. How about if you're facing this way towards the Among Us waterfall, it's this corner over here. So we'll look at it like this so we can imagine it in 3D. But we'll start by having the gravity going that way, so it'll pull you towards this wall after the first gravity shift. I'm not gonna name the other four right now, because I know I'm just gonna forget them, and I don't feel like writing them down. Actually, wait, I should tell you what all four of them are. That way I can go back and watch this footage and just remember them that way, because I need to build the parkour in a way that works for all of them. Well, imagine that the angle you're looking at it from here is this side, and that this is, like I said, here. It's on the closer like corner of this cube that's represented by a square. Or maybe I can just remember what they are by putting some temporary arrows telling me where they're all gonna be. So from bottom to top will be the order you have the different gravities. So that one, and then we'll have the gravity pull you that way. The arrow is like down, so directions this can't go are anywhere from straight up to straight right. So like any directions like this, those aren't allowed, but like this would be fine. But like we do always think about if the gravity switched, I don't know, am I the only one who ever thinks about this? Probably. You only think about it in terms of rotating, like, 90 degrees. But, wouldn't it be interesting if it flipped by, like, only 20 degrees? Things would be mostly normal, but it would be like you're walking uphill when you're really not. This next one will be rotated on multiple axes. 
How the arrow is going to show that, uh, we'll, we'll deal with that at that time. Okay, so here are all the directions I've decided. So we have down, like, first, and then when you go to the next one, you're going to press one of the five buttons. And then the gravity is going to go this way, and then this way. But then on this one, it's also going to be on another axis as well that it's rotated. And then, of course, the last one, like I said, it's going to be completely flipped from this first one. And so the water would be at the top and be able to drain. Now, I did kind of like this all being, like, the same color of the walls, but then it's kind of hard to tell where, like, everything is rotated, and I kind of want you to be able to. So, we're just going to color all the walls the different colors of the rainbow, but in a certain pattern. So, we have the warm colors here, and the cool colors will be over here. When you look at the corner like this, it should go, like, counterclockwise like that. So, that means looking at this one, it should be... We did red, orange, yellow, so it should be green, blue, purple. So to make the parkour work with all these directions, let's first decide where the buttons are going to be. It would preferably need to be in a way that you can only get to one with the correct gravity. So with just the normal one, we can have one here, and next up the gravity flips towards this wall. So that means you should have to go up, which is this way, towards this button, which can be about... Well, you need to not be able to jump to it from these things, so we can put it up here. And next up, the gravity points you towards, uh, here, just like this whole line, not necessarily the corner exactly. So down is like about this direction. You'll be able to walk up the red side and the orange side, because those will be, like, angled in a way that lets you do that. Now, I could put it like over here, maybe, or over here would be about the same, but, but let's think about this. Since this is, it's not actually a 45 degree angle, it's this angle. So the way it's going to work out is this is going to be not a very steep slope. This is going to be, but you'll still be able to climb it, but you won't be able to go on here, but you'll be able to go on top of here like this, or what's currently on top, which is the same for this one. This will be a steep angle you can climb up. No, it won't. This will be a not very steep angle right here, because it's the same as the red. It's parallel to the red, which would mean it'll be quite easy to make this jump, and similarly, this jump too. So I'll just put this on the green wall rather than the yellow wall, because I just want them to not all be the same. We can use that, like, in the gameplay. You'll jump to there. With some parkour, that will lead to the button that can be... Uh, it can't be too close to here, because then you'll be able to jump to it, like here. And if you're noticing, I'm angling it so that the bottom of this decal with the lightning bolt like, that way, it's... This is so confusing, but I think I'm managing. I, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe figure out what I'm trying to say. But to figure out how much I want to angle this, I need to figure out how much this is angled. It's rotated on multiple axes because this whole thing is rotated, but relative to this is what I want. So it's this axis of rotation, the red one on this, which changes the x-axis. At least that's what it mainly changes. So it's a 75, so 15 degree angle. So in other words, the gravity was going this way. Now we're shifting at 15 degrees. So now it's a little bit more like that. So from here, we need to rotate the button 15 degrees. Now I got this one with the arrow rotated on multiple axes relative to this thing. This is going to require 1 million percent brain power. But on the x-axis, the one, the one this is rotated on, this is rotated about the same just the other direction. That means on the one before this, the gravity was like this, where this is down. Here, it's 180 degrees opposite. So now, this is down. It's like up to the left, the way you're looking at it here. So that means things are quite upside down here. But then there's also this axis. So so that's rotating it uh, like forwards a little bit, as you're seeing it here. That's going to mean rotating it sort of this way a little bit. Let's find out how much that is. This is how much did the blue thingy get rotated. We're at about 180 there, so we rotated it twice, which would be 30 degrees. Okay, so that means the top here is being, like, rotated forward by 30 degrees. That's how much it is. So, it's not the blue circle here. It doesn't matter. It's the same direction relatively. So it's gonna be rotated like that, and then however many degrees this is. This one was 15 degrees, and on that axis, this is 180 degrees opposite of that. So remember that I need to get it so that this is steep, this is not steep. Okay, so I did that. Now just rotate it 180 degrees like that. There we go. That's how this is rotated. Okay, you'll be able to get to this button, but that was from earlier anyway, so you'll already have pressed it. It doesn't matter. This should be easy to position the button now. So just duplicate a button. Where won't you be able to just, like, cheese the whole thing by just walking up a wall that's rotated? I could put it here with some parkour leading to it like this, but I need to make sure you can't get to this button from an earlier 
thing, which you'll be able to because this is the floor. If we go down here, it's about like here somewhere. Okay, so that means remembering the order I put these in is kind of useful here because it's red, orange, yellow as you're looking at it like this as I'm rotating it when I edit this. So since this is the floor, you can jump what will be up to here. So if I move this that way, now you can't. It's too high up there, except you'll be able to from here, won't you? Okay, it's never gonna work the way I want it to to make it so you can't get to any later buttons. I'll just make it so that only the button you're actually supposed to be getting to is a button. Everything else is going to be like, I'll change the color of it a little bit so it's like gray, which would indicate you can't press it and shouldn't press it because it won't do anything. So it's just a waste of time even if you can get to it. But rotating the whole thing here like this to get an idea of this was still worth it because it does still remain true that you need to not be able to just like jump to it by climbing up a wall or something, which the way this one was rotated was gonna be really annoying. So it was about here because now if I rotate it so that this goes down, well, like flip it upside down. I don't know what direction, just figure out what direction I mean or what I'm trying to say, but it's not 180 degrees rotated, but it is in about the same position. Actually, how about we look at it this way? This line on this lightning bolt is roughly parallel to the yellow side. So I need to rotate it uh, like this. Okay. But it wasn't 45 degrees. I think it was more like this. That's, yeah, because it, it wasn't 45 degrees. It did nothing by 45 degrees. So it has to be like this because like these are equally not correct. But this is probably correct. It's close enough, so I won't delete that yet, just in case I need it again. But that's the most confusing one. The rest should be pretty easy. Okay, so if placing the buttons didn't require 1 million percent brain power, this definitely would if I were to do this. If I were to try to build all the parkour that was going to be from all the different gravities right now in this box with the normal one, that would require infinity brain power. But instead, what I'm going to do is build each parkour in its own box rotated like it will be, if that makes any sense. Then I'll copy and paste it back to this one, and then copy and paste those boxes from there, if that... Well, you'll see. That was probably a really bad way of explaining it, but we'll go ahead and start here, leading to button one. These signs with the numbers are temporary. They're just so I remember which one, like, you're gonna go to. Like, this is the first button you're gonna go to, so that way I know I'm building parkour leading up to the correct button. I think a push box or push ball would be an interesting idea for this. Yeah, how about I make every one of these begin with using a push box, because it's not anchored, so it's gonna fall to wherever the gravity is pulling it. I can't make it have this material because that changes its density and it's, like, impossible to push now. So I guess we'll just make it studs. I think the way I can get this to work is you have this push box, you're getting it to a specific position to, like, make a jump every time, right? And so when you press the button, it's also going to flip the gravity, which what it's actually doing is teleporting you to the box that's rotated to make it seem like there's that gravity. It's also going to reset the push box in that next box so that it falls from about the position where you pushed it to on the previous one. That way it's like it's falling from that position. So on number two, the gravity pulls you towards the blue wall. And so that the push box, like you'll really see it falling more than like two studs. I'll make it so you gotta push it to over here. And then, how do I wanna mix, like, diamond-plated platforms and studded platforms? I think maybe just basic platforms like this will be diamond plate, but anything more complicated than that, such as a truss walk or something, will be studs. I do wanna keep in mind this is a difficult tower, so I don't really wanna put any truss flicks. But I think truss walks would be okay, just maybe not going around the corners, because that's annoying sometimes. We'll do this, so you like do that, and then you can jump up here. Then, how about to here? Wait, but then if you're going back up here anyway, why would you even jump down? Okay, this is a problem. Now, that doesn't mean I can only build parkour over here, because I can go up this way. As long as it doesn't too badly interfere with what will lead to this button. That was when the gravity pulls you towards this, where this is a not steep slope and this one is so the parkour is going to be rotated this way a little bit when you are trying to get to button number three so i guess i'll build these platforms as just two by twos in a way that when it's rotated or even now in fact you can get to this button except this button's not going to do anything yet and here i think we'll use a moving part but it'll be rotated like this you normally wouldn't see a moving part like this but I think I like that because it's sort of like it would be moving straight up if the gravity was facing this way, which it never does, but I think that sort of adds to the, the gravity will be changing idea. And as you just saw, you can jump off of here to the button. So that completes the parkour on this first one. Okay, so this box is 82 studs tall. So that means moving it up 100 each time should work well. Maybe 125, so that means move it up 25 more. Just in case rotating it does anything weird. Okay, so this one we want... Okay, so this one, we want this side, also known as this side, to be rotated 
down. Like, that's the bottom. So, I want to do that for this next box. And actually, this doesn't make sense, because now it's just like... Now that this is the bottom, now it looks like it's going up. So, okay, that does work out. So, that's going to mean you're here, and that push box is over here, because it fell from up there. This push box, since it is technically different, I do want its spawn location to be up there. And when you press this button, you'll also press a reset, a push box resetter that'll respawn this. So, you'll appear on this floor, and you'll see that push box fall down. Unless you're not looking that direction, which you probably won't be, because you'll be facing this way. Which means you'll be facing this way. So now I don't have to worry quite as much about being able to jump to things from up here, because you don't start on top of here. But I'll try to make it so when you go to the next one, you're facing towards where the push box is. You'll be facing this way, and then down becomes, like, over here. So that means the push box will, like, fall this way. I think, I think that'll work, yeah. If we have the push box start, like, over here. Now, hold on, can you jump to here from here? Yes, you can. Okay, that's not necessarily a bad thing. What I can do is you do do that to get up here, and maybe you have to get the push box onto a pressure plate. That way, you can, like, get from here to here. So this pressure plate, I have it set to both player activated and push block activated as true. That way, even before you get the push box over here, you can, like, stand on it and just see what it'll activate. Of course, it's gotta be the push box that's on it, that way it stays activated. What's it gonna activate? It's gonna activate this platform here. So, if I set its transparency to 0.6 and can't collide to false, and then have this make objects visible, now when you stand on it, it activates that. Now, there will be, like, a wire that I'll place, that way it's more easy to figure out that it, that's what it's connected to. And I also wanna make sure you can't do that. Which, of course, you can, but that's a problem with a solution, and that solution is gonna be this. Oh, wait, then you could just jump on here. Okay, there, so now you shouldn't be able to make that jump. How will this affect what happens elsewhere? Well, let's see. This platform is right here, so it's like the back wall as you look at it on this two-dimensional representation. I think most notably, it would just, like, serve as a platform, particularly here, maybe on, like, these other ones, too. This one, it probably isn't gonna make much of a difference because you're not gonna be going over there. You'll be going this way. I've added this spinning part here and a spinning lava here, so let me scale it the other direction. And this one was 20 studs long, so this one I also want that to be the case. I'll make it like 15 tall. You shouldn't be able to jump over that. So we'll just make it a normal kill brick. Five damage and the color is just the same as these platforms. So you have to do that. And then you can jump down here to get to the button, which will flip the gravity so that you fall this way. We're actually more at an angle, so it's like upwards, but down once it flips the gravity. Wait, but then why do we even need the thing there if you can just jump to here? Because this is going to be here. If this is not activated, there's no way to get to the button once this is gone anyway. And just make that can't collide fall so you can't use that, even though it's temporary. But there's no way to get to that, so you need this in order to walk underneath here and be able to get to the button. Oh, and before we move on to the next one, I do want to make it so that the Among Us waterfall always goes down, because I would assume that's affected by gravity. I think if I just change direction to, uh, front, should be this side? Yeah, there we go. So you'd get teleported to here. I don't know if you'd, like, fall. I feel like you should. So if I make this can collide false, I think that would be good. Yeah. Actually, I'll leave it can collide true. What's over here, it, it's like so easy to begin with. Like, this one's gonna be very short anyway. Like, you would do this to get to that button, or even if you like, go across here, what does that really skip? Not really anything, except like a few jumps. You're kind of just doing part of the first one, but with the gravity rotated a little bit. Okay, now for this. If I just set this back to bottom, that's about in the same direction. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. It's kind of like they're sliding down this angled wall here. If I made it so that it goes straight down, it would like go through the wall, which wouldn't really make much sense. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And here you can actually go back inside here. You couldn't on the other one because the way it was rotated, you couldn't fit through the trap doors, but here you can. Do I want to do anything with that? Right now, no, but perhaps on the last one where it's where the gravity goes straight up, I could put a button here that does something. In fact, maybe I could make button 6 do that. Currently, this was button 6, because it's on what will be the ceiling, so it's like you gotta go upwards to get to it. Which I think, yeah, I'll put a button here. Since while the gravity is flipped like that, that's probably the only time you're gonna be able to get to the button. And so that'll do something that allows you to get to button 6. But for now, if you want to come in here and, like, sit on the rotated couch, you can. Off camera, I built the rest of these, and while doing so, I found a bug. I, th I think it's a bug, it probably is. I don't see why it would be intentional. But it's super specific, and probably this is the only time anyone's ever gonna notice this. If you take a spin part and have local movement on, and then rotate it along with another part, it'll do that. It won't actually rotate it. Or another spinning part, it'll do the same thing. Please fix. 
The reason I happened to notice that was because of these spinning parts, but it's fine. I just made my best guess as to where it goes approximately. But they're actually all going to be the same because I'm going to delete all of these now except the top one. Because this final one includes everything that all the other ones need to include. Okay, now, does this use too many parts for me to select all of them? Yes, it does, of course. Fine, I'll just select some of them at a time. If I select, like, the top three and move it, like, what was it? It was, like, 82 studs. We'll go 100, global axis, like that. Hopefully that did that right. Now we need to do that for the other two, but I gotta go more this way so I don't select any of that. Like I said, those are all gonna be deleted, but I'm just moving them out of the way. The reason I'm moving them like that is because I'm about to delete them in a minute, but I wanna do the thing that I need to do, which is why I'm deleting them before I delete them, in case I need to bring them back for some reason. But basically what I'm doing is, like, if we go back to, like, the second or first one, there's only the parkour that I built leading up to, let's see, this one was the second one, so only leading up to the second one. And just so happens to be the third one, too, because that didn't actually add any parts. But it's not all of them. So this one does include all of them. And conveniently, it's also rotated like it's 90 degrees, so it's just like a cube. Which means I can easily use the global axis, which means rotating most of these. This thing here will not be affected by that bug. So if I duplicate that whole thing and move it down here, and then move this over by 100 studs just so I can get it lined up the same, it shouldn't make too much of a difference, but I will anyway. Let's do that. And it really didn't have to actually be 100, just some number that I would remember how much I need to move it back, which is that much. Okay, but right now this is rotated the same as this one up here that I just copied it from. I need it to be rotated like this, which should be easy enough. Just make sure I'm on global, rotate it like that, and there we go. Now if that did everything correctly, which it looks like it did, we should be good. Now select this whole thing, set my move grid to 125, duplicate it again. And now I need to get this one to look like this one. There we go. Now that one's rotated the same. And I just need to basically repeat that for all of these. Even these three that aren't rotated 90 degrees with that are still pretty easy with the exception of this one. So like this one, all I need to do is just rotate that 15 degrees. And you can see that's correct. And actually I'll do the annoying one last. Because that way I can just have this one selected. Which I can go ahead and get back to the normal rotation. That's not the normal rotation. Well like from this I can easily get to this because it's just one axis of rotation. Now the way rotating that lined up this is like overlapping here. So I'm just going to move this over by 100 for now. Once I delete that I'll move it back. Okay now for this one. Now I actually can select just any of these to copy it from. This one's rotated 90 degrees so that should be easy enough and i didn't select anything there i know for sure because it says 243 there which is how many parts each of these uses duplicate that move it up 125 times 2 which is 250 to get it into this position and then i need to do the same series of rotations that i did earlier to get this when i was placing the buttons now the reason this one is annoying is because since i'm rotating it on multiple axes to get it exactly how i want it to i'm gonna have to do at least one local rotation which is going to cause this to cause problems but the global rotation is going to be 30 degrees like that and then i have to use a local rotation here because otherwise it's going to rotate on the global axis like this and it won't like i won't really be able to get it to this orientation but i need to go 15 degrees like that and then 180 degrees like that or I could do whatever the single rotation would be, but anyway. Hmm, I seem to have done something wrong. I'm deleting and starting over. Oh wait, I think what happened was I forgot to set this back to like this, which is how when I made this rotated box originally, I started with that. So I just need to rotate this globally back to here, the original one. There. Now I should be able to rotate it on this axis, 30 degrees, and then set it to local. And on this, okay, this looks more familiar to what I did the first time and it looks more correct. Except for, of course, this. So when I deselect this, these are still gonna be here, but they need to be over here. But I can't keep the preview there or anything. Actually, what if I, like, select them? Nope, I can't, okay. Okay, so we have all the boxes in all the correct positions and rotations. And I'm gonna keep these ones for now, just in case I for some reason need them but I'll delete them soon. But what I now need to do is going to be like connecting buttons and also making the buttons that you're not supposed to be pressing like those ones make them not actually be buttons. The first of those sorts of things I'm going to do I think is going to be just putting this here. This is never going to open even after you get all five buttons. What is going to happen after you get all five buttons is the door is going to open that lets you get into the aqua box. So this will save a few parts actually. I know it says I'm really close to part limit, but that's just because of all these. 
that's taking up like over a thousand parts there. So none of these teleport pads I actually need, and you're not even going to see them, so I can also delete them. And then these aren't actually getting activated by buttons, you'll just see it there on like the next one of these boxes each time, like because it's a new one completely. So yeah, like on this one, none of them are activated yet, so I can just delete all of them which saves all those parts. Here, I want to delete these, delete four of these, and then this one here, because it's like you pressed one of them, so that thing appeared. One of the buttons, that is. This one, same thing, but two of them, and I just continue this for the rest of the boxes. Alright, I've been busy getting all these things to work and getting, like, teleporters and buttons and stuff to work. There's still a few other things I need to get done, but what's most important is done, so you can actually play through this. Now, here we are on the last one. Next to this final button, there's gonna be a sign, but at the moment, it's up here. It reads, Notice. When you press this button, you'll be able to access the Aqua Box. If you are fast enough, you can follow the blue arrows to complete an optional section that will help you on the next floor. So remember when I was talking about how as the water is draining, there'll be, like, a timed section that I'll somehow use that to do? Well, that's what this is going to be. Even though the idea is that the water's been draining out the whole time while you're in here, the actual timer doesn't start until you press this button. And that button is going to open up these two doors, allowing you to get to the aqua box, and it's also going to make this begin moving, the water. So this was quite an expensive part, but luckily the cash storage part, which was over there, but I deleted it now because I had to sell it. Because of that, I was able to get this to work. I'll figure out exactly what move time I want this to be later, but this is going to be slowly draining, and you need to... Well, maybe not too slowly, because it needs to be, if you go too slow, you're not going to have time to get over to here, where the start of that optional section is going to be. If you're too slow, you won't be able to get onto here, which is going to be the first of those. And this optional section, I'm not going to build right now. And this optional section, I'm not going to build right now. That's why I had the sign up here. But if you complete it, you'll go up this wall here, which will allow you to get to the comically large air conditioner, which you can pick up. So if you get that, it'll help you on the next floor, but if you don't get it, the next floor will still be possible. So when you press that button, it'll open those, and the water should begin draining also. Oh, I need to turn reverse off on that. Now, there is a slight problem, and that's that once this reaches the bottom, you can go here and press the button again. However, once you exit here, there's no way back. Or is there? There might be. Oh, there is. Well, no, because only that only works if you're on here or here before the water completely drains. Unless perhaps if you're like here and then you realize you're not going to be able to make it over here, you could come back this way and then do all this again to give this another try. But I feel like no one's really going to do that much just to do this, which isn't even required. Because the required path you have to do to complete the aqua box floor, that one will begin at like the bottom here. So that pretty much concludes everything that I wanted to build in this video. So let's play everything I built start to finish. Right here is the obby ID if you want to come play this. So floor five. So the current universe is the gravity box. Each of the buttons throughout the floor will alter the gravity using the present of up is down from the previous floor. Because if you remember, there are these different presents you would open, and here's present of up is down, and it says you've picked up the box, you'll need it on the next floor. See, because it's like up is down, because it's like the gravity's flipping. I just changed this text a little bit, actually, from what I've had it the whole video, so let me copy that. I'll tell you why in a minute. This says the gravity box is located in the aqua box. When the gravity is in its final setting, the water will be able to drain from the aqua box and you can access that floor. So we have this lovely diagram showing where the gravity is and where you are and where that drain is. In each gravity setting, your goal is to reach the button with the light blue lightning bolt. I'm also going to put arrows that tell you where to go, but for now, uh, just figure it out. So it appears there are quite a few shortcuts that you can take. Oh well, I guess. Well, assuming you don't take any shortcuts, you need to get the pushbox over here, but where should it begin? How about here? The intended route is you take the pushbox over here, and then you need to do this, and then jump up these things, until you get to this moving part, and then you wait for it to go back over here, and then you can jump off, and it'll flip the gravity, and if you make it in time, you can get onto here again. Because that's, actually no, that's not where you need to go. You need to move this pushbox first over to this pressure plate, which will activate this because uh, you'll need that to be activated in a moment. Then you want to use the moving part to right up here, and then you're just trying to get over to here, on top of here, and then, hmm, this might be a problem. These are just shortcuts I'll have to fix, I guess, but again, the intended route is you have to use this thing. Because this is here, you have to have this here in order to like go underneath this to press that button, which will flip the gravity again. You might fall down there like I did, or perhaps or perhaps you'll be here. But either way, you just need to go over here to where this button is, and you can kind of redo the section from the first one, just get to there this time. That will once again flip the gravity. And here, you need to get to this platform where you need to do a pushbox section. This will reset it. Okay, so there's another pressure plate here. If you want to go stand on it first and see what it does, 
it activates this truss, which is going to be needed to get over there. But you need to get this push box to about right here, and then you can press this button, which will activate that other part for uh, five seconds. That's probably not entirely necessary for you to be able to push the box up there, but then it kept sliding back over here, which was really annoying. So yeah, that's why I put that there. Now you can use this push box to activate this, and then it'll stay activated. If you want, you can take another route to get up on top of here if you want. Oh, of course, more shortcuts. Well, what's supposed to be the case is that you need this here in order to make the jump onto here. Then you just gotta wrap around to there. Okay, I didn't set that teleport location right. Well, I did before I moved this back. Okay, now here you don't actually need to use the push box at all. Instead, you need to get to this button here. So the most consistent way to get to it is to go up here and then sort of like just walk off without jumping. I think maybe you can with jumping, but there. Now you can press the button again, it'll flip the gravity. Then what you need to do is you need to get to this button in here. So you need to go down here, and then you need to jump across these, which go like underneath here, until you get to here, and then you can jump up to here. Alternatively, you can take the push box, and then use it to be able to high jump up to here, which is probably what you should do, because then it's faster to get back to here, and you can retry that, because that's kind of a tricky jump. This button activates something on the red side of the gravity box. So press it, and it'll activate that tightrope up there. So now you gotta go back up there. So again, you can use those spinners, and then you gotta find some way up there. Actually, it appears you can't take that route. Well, there is another way. And that's gonna be, you take the push box and... Oh. Pretend there's a way for now. You can maybe, like, do this or something. Uh, and then you could, like, jump over here to this truss. Yeah, there we go. Now that this is here, you can use this tightrope and, uh, there will be that sign there that you can read before you press the button. It's not there at the moment, though. You'd press that, it'll open up these doors, and there will also be not necessary high jumps later, and that's currently the end. I'll also add this sign that says this is the end of the tower for the time being, just so you don't get confused and think you don't know where to go until I build that. Oh yeah, you may also be wondering why this says floor 9 is through here. You'll understand that when I build floor 9. Well, that's going to conclude today's video. Here's the ID once again if you want to come play this. Of this video series of building Tower of the Grand Finale, two more building videos remain, and then I'll play through the whole thing. And so the next two Obby Creator building videos will be my final two Obby Creator building videos, but not my last Obby Creator videos, because of course it's going to be the full playthrough, and I'll continue doing, like, playing requested obbies and stuff. But of course that's not the end of building videos for me, because I'll be continuing Sharks Many Towers of Heck in Roblox Studio. As always, if you have any floor ideas for future floors of Tower of the Grand Finale, or of the Ring Force Citadel, Citadel of Leon Laboratories, please leave a comment with them. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video, and have a great day.